Valiant Chris James by Lynn Katulka Illustrated by Christine Gibson Valiant Chris James and a brown-spotted steed were guarding the kingdom from robbers and thieves when far in the distance from the orange opal cliffs came a nasally sound, a honk and a sniff. <sniffs> the horrible sound seemed to bounce down the cliff straight into the valley where the winds often drift. Mounting the steed with a leap and a bound, Chris James galloped with speed towards the sound. They trotted and splashed through puddles knee-deep from the rain that had fallen at the first of the week. Riding through town, everyone waved, bidding good luck, Godspeed, and be brave. Now valiant Chris James was the boldest of knights, who had conquered two ogres in one single fight. But even brave knights have fears to be felt, and Chris's was dragon's who could make armor melt. A scaly green dragon lived high in the cliffs, precisely the source of that honk and that sniff. <clears throat> As they drew ever closer to the dragon's dark home, the honking and sniffing increased in tone. Thy and Chris James dismounted the steed and climbed up the cliffs through the thorny black weeds. Sneaking round corners so as not to be seen. Chris James hoped this dragon wasn't really that mean. A peak in the cave that the dragon called home showed very large piles of cleanly picked bones. Guy and Chris James swallowed all of the fear, entering the cave shouting, Dragon, I'm here! With a thundering thud and a giant clump, the dragon appeared, making everything jump. The dragon looked mean, red eyes all aglow. But his slimy green scales were hanging too low. The dragon had purple under each of his eyes, and circling his head was a flock of big flies. This scaly green dragon, who was said to be bold, was stuck in his cave with a nasty head cold. Valiant Chris James climbed high on a rock so the dragon could hear and they could then talk. The dragon explained to Valiant Chris James that the cause of his cold was the steady cool rain. And because of his cold being all in his head, when he tried to breathe fire, out came honking instead. If I had a fire, the sick dragon said, I bet I'd get better and my scales wouldn't shed. Valiant Chris James sat and thought for a spell, and finally said, I'll make you well, but you have to promise, you have to swear, that you'll not try to melt the armor I wear. The dragon agreed to the valiant knight's terms, and he promised the moon to get rid of his germs. Valiant Chris James was happy to help, starting a fire so warmth could be felt. The cave was aglow with the fire's warm heat, as the dragon set nearer to warm his cold feet. Valiant Chris James stayed through the night, feeding the flames to keep them alight. The dragon soon drifted into a slumbering sleep, as Valiant Chris James made not a peep. The dragon awoke the very next day to find his cold had crept far away. The dragon looked better, his scales way up high. The purple was gone and so were the flies. He was ever so grateful to valiant Chris James that he chuckled and blew out hot smoking flames. The knight edged away yelling, We made a deal. You promised I wouldn't be your next meal. The dragon had started to circle the knight preparing himself for a fearsome fight. The knight's armored hat fell off in the haste as long red curls tumbled down to her waist. A girl, mocked the dragon, not brave, not strong. 
That, said the knight, is where you are wrong. I, Christine James, came into your cave. That in itself shows you I'm brave. I rode through the night and I climbed up the cliff, fighting through weeds thorny and stiff. I built the fire that drove out your cold, and all you can say is, I'm weak and not bold? The dragon said, Sorry, with a pitiful pout, and expertly stamped the small fires out. I'm perfectly well, and you've been very kind. As you can see, my breathing is fine. The dragon then said, What can I do to repay your kindness, my debt to you? Valiant Chris James looked out on the town as the cold, heavy rain still pounded down. If only the sun would shine its bright rays to break up the gloomy and rainy days. The village is covered with a thick coat of mud, and the ruby red river is starting to flood. The dragon agreed with valiant Chris James. He said that the rain was a very big pain. There might be something I can do to repay the debt I owe to you. Come to the edge of my dark, dreary cave and stand to the side slightly away. The dragon stood straight and looked to the sky, gulped in two breaths and squinted his eyes. Straight to the clouds he blew bright flames, much to the shock of valiant Chris James. The air grew heavy, hot and dry, as the flames from the dragon coated the sky. The heavy, dark clouds gave up their fight and changed from their gray to a bright, fluffy white. The clouds that were drying drizzled hot steam that floated to town like a babbling stream. The villagers stumbled, running in fear, but soon they were heard shouting with cheer, for the steam that appeared on the town's grassy knoll raised to new heights the baker's sweet rolls. It delivered all of its heat, a wrinkle-free finish to the ladies' white sheets, and cold tadpole pond was warmer than wool as the children splashed in with a push and a pull. The dragon stopped blowing his streamer of flame and gleamingly smiled at valiant Chris James. I hope that the sun repays my fee, and you'll graciously accept my apology. You're a very good knight, Sir Christine James. You're brave enough to stand by your name. Sir Christine James held her head way up high, and bid the dragon good day and goodbye. The villagers thanked her for braving the cliff, and for ridding the village of that honk, and that sniff. The prince that sat in the castle's high tower bowed graciously toward her and brought her some flowers. But valiant Chris James, though grateful she felt, was secretly glad her armor didn't melt. <laughs>